Hey, good afternoon, guys. I'm here to do a part two on John 4. And typically, I don't do a part two unless the Holy Spirit has given me a revelation to share. And so that's why I am here. When I was cleaning up, um, I put on the television the audio Bible because I sometimes like to listen to it while I am cleaning. And I just like the word of God to go through my home. Um, I kind of see it as a purification. But anyhow... Um, so you'll never believe it pops up on John. John, not just John, any chapter, but chapter four, where it talks about the Sumerian woman and her testimony. So when I heard that come on the audio Bible, I stopped in my tracks. I'm like, okay, Lord, there is something in here that you're wanting to teach me. So I'm listening to it. And of course, you know, when you listen from your ear gate, you're picking up new revelation, new understanding. It's different from reading it. You know, they're both important. So I'm listening and I'm picking up new stuff. So I know when I, when he's brought that same scripture to me again, there is something that he wants me to get. So I go back and I open up my Bible. And the first thing that just kind of pops out at me is the phrase that Jesus says, give me a drink. And it was like light bulbs went off in my head, you all, because I have seen this a thousand times, but I have never had a true, like, there's something deeper about that question. You need to really, you know, study that, meditate on that, think upon that. And so I looked at it and it says, a woman of Samaria came to draw water and Jesus said to her, give me a drink. This is a powerful question because first of all, Jesus is God. You have the creator asking the creation for something to drink. So you see the humility there. He's a traveler. I assume he's thirsty. He's hot. He's there for a divine appointment as well because none of the disciples are with him. He is there for her. And we all have divine appointments with the Lord, right? Where we are all at the well and we have an opportunity that when the Savior asks us to give him a drink, will we oblige him? You see, we have free will. He will never force us to do anything. We have a part to play. And so that threw off the Sumerian because she's not used to a Jew you know, asking her to do anything because Jews and Samaritans, there was like a division there because Jews were seen to think that they were better, holier than the Samarians because they were the chosen people. And that's a whole story on its own, right? That we're not going to get into. But the fact that she, there was a trust issue there and we all have trust issues. When you surrender to Christ, you have to let go of your fears. You have to let go of all of your ways and understanding and you have to lay it at the altar and you see this happening in their exchange because Jesus is telling her you know what this physical water that you're seeking I have water that if you drink from it it will be eternal springs living water you'll never thirst again so right there something clicks she they go from talking about physical water to spiritual things and she understands that they're not talking about regular water anymore because they begin to talk about worship. And she talks about, well, you all worship at the temple, but we worship in the mountain. And Jesus stops her right there and says, there will come a time when you will neither worship at the mountain or the temple, but you will worship God with spirit and in truth. And when I just, it resonated with me, like during this whole COVID-19 and everything, we're not able to go to church. There is a time, this is a time right now where God is seeking out worshipers who will worship him in truth and spirit. And he's calling his people and his children now. And I just thought that that was so powerful. And then I love how what the Holy Spirit taught me is that Jesus always addresses our immorality, our sin, because it's part of our purification, him cleansing us. So he tells her, okay, you want the water, go tell your husband to come. Come here and let me talk with him. But right there, she knew, I'm not, I don't have a husband. Wait a minute. And they begin the conversation. He says, I know you don't have one. You've had five husbands. So right there, she knew she couldn't get away around her stand. She couldn't just deny it. She had to address it because Jesus addresses the sin in our lives our lives that's just powerful on its own and so when she recognized that she recognized who he is 
she drops her water pot. She drops everything that she has of value. Isn't that like the man who finds the treasure in the field? He drops everything he has and he goes and he pursues Jesus. Because that's how it is when you meet the living Savior. You don't contain it. You can't keep it to yourself. You run. You go. You tell everyone you know, come meet a man who told me everything about my life. I question people who think that they've met the Lord, but yet they have no testimony. They have no fire to bring others to Christ. Who have you met? Have you met the living God? Because when you meet him, no one can contain what he's done. And I just want to reiterate, your testimony is powerful. Um, what comes to mind is when Jesus healed the man that had a demon, he wanted to come with him because he was so grateful. He wanted to be under the care of Jesus. He wanted to go and teach, I guess, and be with the disciples. But Jesus said, no, what you will be better served as go and tell everyone what I have done for you. Because his testimony will bring people to Christ. Do you understand how powerful your testimony is? Not everybody can be a teacher. Not everybody is sent to be an evangelist. Not everybody is sent to be a prophet. Not everybody is sent to, to uh, do what mission trips around the world. Some of us are there just to give our testimony. Your testimony is valuable. Your testimony can bring many to Christ. So share it, share your testimony. Don't let the enemy shame you in not telling your testimony. Don't let pride get the best of you. Go out, tell people about the name of Jesus Christ. Glorify him because he is worthy to be praised. I, I just pray y'all that these videos are blessing someone, you know, if I never meet you ever, ever, I pray, you know, that me allowing the Holy Spirit to use me to walk through these scriptures are giving you just a different perspective, you know, understanding that maybe you never would have thought of. And um, I just pray that it blesses all those who hear. So, and it gives us all something to think about. It gives us all something to meditate on each day. The word of God is powerful. So don't miss your hour of visitation when he asks you, Give me a drink. What will you say? All right, guys. I will talk to you all. God willing, tomorrow. Stay blessed. And um, I love you. <laughs>